ridiculous. I want to speak to your manager right now. Hello? Hey, did you just hang up on a client? We just got a complaint. I did. Yeah. She was yelling very loudly and aggressively. Okay, but you can't hang up on a client like that. Ew, no, gross. <laughs> this is 2022. We are not tolerating any Karens. <laughs> okay, but still, you can't. Are we still having free falafel Friday? Yes, we are, but we have to oh, get a call. Bye. <laughs> You ever get the feeling you're being watched? What are you doing? What are you doing? You stop that now. What? Now. What? <laughs> what? What? What's the problem? the roof of the tree. Oh, okay. What's the problem? Yo. Okay. <laughs> She moves pretty fast for a girl in a wheelchair, huh? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> wow, this is crazy. That's crazy shit. I'm not this job, go. Get away from my property. Get the fuck away from me, you don't, fucking crazy fuck. Don't force me. Get the fuck away from me, you okay. crazy okay. fuck. Okay. Go ahead. You fucking crazy fucking loon. Many of y'all know that I'm having a prank war with an evil genius known as my son. He farted in a crowded elevator, blamed it on me, and said, Dad, is it because of your colonoscopy? I embarrassed him at school by going onto the school intercom and telling his whole school how much I love you, dovey dove him. He got me in trouble with my Latino wife while we were in a conversation. He just blurts out, Dad, she's not fat, she's pregnant. I responded by having the school secretary, Janice, call my wife and saying, Hey, where's Alex at? He's supposed to be in summer school. He has to be in summer school because of all of his failing grades through the school year. Now it has been some time since he vowed that he was going to get me back, so naturally I kind of let my guard down a little bit. Well, the payback from my son came home to roost last night. Last night I got his takeout from Taco Bell. And because, well, it's Taco Bell, my stomach started feeling a little uneasy. I went to the bathroom. I came back out, sat down on the couch, and started eating the Taco Bell again. Then out of nowhere, my mouth starts feeling a little tingly. That's odd. That tingling feeling quickly and abruptly became hotter than a dragon's kiss in Satan's asshole. My mouth was on fire, and my 15-year-old is just sitting there laughing his ass off. At this point in time, I am sweating bullets. This numbing feeling and pain is just radiating through my mouth. I grab my water, and I take a huge slug. After taking that huge slug of water, I had to quickly spit it out because it was making it 10 times fucking worse. Why? <laughs> because it wasn't water. Now, in the time that it took me to get up, go to the bathroom, use the bathroom, and come back and start eating my food again, was just enough time for my son to get a Carolina Reaper pepper, chop it up, put it in my food, and dump out my water and replace it with vodka. Do you see the evil genius that I am working with here? My son somehow got his hands on a Carolina Reaper pepper, chopped it up, put it in my food, knew that I was going to take a drink of water because of how hot it was going to be, and replaced it with vodka because he knew that that shit would burn even more going down. I fucking hate this kid. <laughs> you broke my new iPhone. That's not an iPhone. You sped by, you startled me, I dropped it, and now you owe me a no, new I'm iPhone. No, I'm not getting you a new one. Ow! What are you doing? You pushed me over. No, I haven't moved and I have your camera. Hi there. Hi. Hi. So, um, sorry, I'll, you can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we are here because we want to file charges against Officer Mendoza because there was uh, an unlawful imprisonment yesterday. Okay. And I'm not sure if you guys know about what uh, the... Hold on, please. Yeah. Uh, 602 is the penal code which describes trespass. Okay. Um, there's absolutely nothing in there that would allow the officer to arrest my friend. There was actually two friends that were harassed yesterday. In a public federal building. Yeah, a federal building. And then uh, we just want to make sure that you guys know about uh, Title 42, 1983. Okay. Um, which gives us the ability to strip you of your immunity and sue you. Okay. Uh, and then there's also Title 18, 
242, which is deprivation of rights under color of law. Okay. So when you guys have taken an oath to the Constitution and you violate our rights, these are actually criminal charges that we can file against you. Okay. And uh, I, I know you've got a lot of things to do, but we have a lot of things no, to do. No, I understand that. Right. Is, yeah. Okay. And uh, Title 18, 241 doesn't really apply yesterday because that's conspiracy against rights. Okay. Um, but you guys can be. Uh, Fine. Okay. You can be imprisoned, and then there's even more uh, serious okay. uh, uh, penalties that you can file against you. So uh, we would like to file charges. How okay. Do we go, how do, how, and that's why I'm okay, here. Okay. How do we go about? And doing that's that? why I'm here. So okay. that's, I understand that's a lot, and you guys have a lot on your mind. Um, no, I would I, say we're probably just a well-informed, okay. well-educated, peaceful people oh. that are sick and tired of having our rights violated. Okay. So uh, we want to hold you guys accountable. Okay. I was told you were requesting. Was that sorry. Terry? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is Terry his no, supervisor? That's the chief. Okay. Okay. That's our chief. In a matter of thirty minutes, if I, is all I'm asking of your patience. Okay. Um, it's going to be no sooner than that, unfortunately. Okay. okay so that's kidnapping that's is not serious enough that's not, for you that's guys. Not what I'm it's trespassing is more serious that's for them. Uh, right. Saying. Okay. But okay. you guys showed up yesterday within one minute. No, no, to, no. Uh, to arrest my friend for trespassing, and you, I mean I'm, clearly. I'm Clearly, you don't even know what the trespass means, the 602 penal code. I'm um, telling so you. So I want to be able to hand you. that over, but 30 minutes for unlawful imprisonment and kidnapping is not serious enough for so anybody I'm, to come over here. I'm telling okay. you. Okay. One is not available in two. I see. Okay. The phone that you continued to call was tying up emergency lines. Okay, so I wanted to this contact is an emergency. you guys. I understand. We've that. been trying to do this since yesterday. Okay, I understand that. But you called, you made a uh, call for service. And it was registered, but I wanted to speak with you to let you know that you do not need to continue to call into call into call, okay? Because you will be helped. It's okay, just a matter well, of time. we do need to continue to call because this is a serious crime that we need to. And we have other support. things to attend to too. Yeah, so we do. We can stand out here and wait. All right, your total is nine dollars. Great. I'll pay for my order with my American Express Platinum card. Uh. Oh, sorry. Did you not hear me? I said I would be paying with my American Express Platinum card. I heard you the first time, just not sure why you felt the need to yell it. Oh, was I yelling? I didn't notice. Okay, whatever. You can pay now. Is this machine set to accept American Express Platinum? Sure. Are you sure? Because a lot of machines don't recognize American Express Platinum cards, such as mine, because they're considered luxury cards. Your entire purchase is less than $10. Well, that doesn't stop me from using my American Express Platinum card. Does it? No. Great. So I can just tap my American Express Platinum card? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, but your card declined? What? I said your American Express Platinum card declined? Keep your voice down. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that your American Express Platinum card declined on a $10 purchase. You're driving a loud car in a neighborhood where there is an elementary school. I'm allowed to drive here. And I'm allowed to call the police. And tell them what? Are you filming me right now? Yeah? Okay, good, good. Go on, put me on Facebook then. Oh, this Karen got it really good. This story takes place in an apartment and around 2 a.m. This man here worked as a bartender and he had just come home from work. He only lived on the second floor, but he was really tired, so he decided to just take the elevator instead of the stairs. And right before the elevator doors closed, another passenger, Karen, got on the elevator. And she pressed the button for the 17th floor where she lived. And for some reason, when she saw that the man had pressed the second floor button, she got really angry. She told him, just stop being a lazy prick and just walk up the stairs. It's only one floor. It's not even that much. Well, this guy was pretty tired and he didn't need any more of Karen's BS. So when the elevator arrived at the second floor, he pressed every single button so the elevator stops at each floor on the way up. Oh, and the best part, this apartment only had two elevators. One which was out of service at the time. So Karen had no choice but to stop and wait on every floor on the way up. Or, you know, she could not be a lazy piece of garbage and take the stairs like she told the man to do. <laughs> Literally get away from my car. Girl, what are you doing? Leave! <laughs> so I had some bushes cut in the backyard. I was out there with my friend and my sister. And as we were down here minding our business, guess who came out? Mm-hmm. Yep, she sure did. So we finally finished. We went up on the deck. And she's recording us. Like, recording us. Full-fledged recording us. Try to cover her face to be nice. But you know what? It's all right. Whatever. So she recorded us the whole time we were cutting bushes. Also, while we were putting up the tools, 
I really didn't know I lived this interesting life for someone to record me. Like, am I a superstar? So I end up telling my mom about the whole situation. She buys me an umbrella. Thanks, mom. However, do you see that cross? So here's the crazy Karen story. I was not expecting it to blow up. Um, he was swearing at me out the window because my horn on my truck was going off the alarm. Um, I asked him what he was going to do about it and I was going to fix it. I turned off the alarm. He said he's going to go inside and go get something and to give him two minutes. Um, so I took that as a threat. I grabbed my dog. You see me pointing at the cameras. You see him flick them off and say, you know, I don't give an F about the cameras. Um, you know, he started making advancements saying he's going to hurt me and, 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 you know, threaten me in different ways. Um, so I said, okay, you know what, um, this is getting out of hand. And I myself had something in my pocket to help me in a situation if this were to get um, any farther. And in a minute here, you'll see his son actually come out of the, the, the house. And there he is there. Um, and then you will also see his wife come out um, and say, you know, if your dog bites my husband, I'm going to sue you and blah, blah, blah. Um, but in Ohio, where I live, there's a thing called Castle Doctrine, where if you come and make advancements and threaten me or my property in any type of way, um, you know, I can um, put a level of force out there that um, is not deadly force because in Ohio, dog bites are not deadly force. And there's his wife. Um, you can see her yelling at me as well. I'm saying, hey, you know, step off my property. And they're saying, I'm not on your property. But as you can clearly see, he is on the driveway. Um, he made one more advancement. Um, He's kind of staying on his side of the property except for one foot, um, which is the reason I didn't let the dog go um, because that's kind of an iffy situation to where he's half on his property, half on mine. Um, but the dog was doing what he was supposed to do. Um, it's called a hold and bark. He was trained by a company called Alpha Pack Canine Training. The dog did exactly what he was supposed to do. Super proud of the dog. Um, well, we'll see if Crazy Karen does anything else next. You have been Ma'am, I'm just trying to tell you. Oh, you no, got... I have it all on tape right No, here. no, look, you, you pulled the hose out at the gas yeah, station right, back sure there. Yeah, right, Yeah. Maybe. What? Dude. You're being a little patronizing. Can you just fuck off? Thank you. All right, I'll fuck off then. Have a good one, mate. Hello. Hello. Good. I love the accent. My name's Oliver. Do you guys know Anna next door? Just kidding. Do you guys know Anna next door, though? No, I don't. I don't want anything done. But thank you. Let's I not get too excited. I, I Let's not get married outside. before we go out on a date. No, I don't even know what you're talking about. Or by the way, and the windows down. Thank you. you. Be any more patronizing? Can you just fuck off? Thank you. All right, I'll fuck off then. Have a good one, mate. Need to have that here. I don't, Misery. I don't have it in the store, but I could probably order it for you. I'm not interested in waiting. I mean, I've already see? waited a long time for the paperback to come out. Mi Paul Sheldon, Misery's child. Misery, misery in France, misery betrayed, misery in love. You don't know any of these books? What kind of uh, what kind of cockadoody bookstore is this that you don't even know Paul Sheldon? Paul Sheldon. Who, let me tell you something. I am Paul Sheldon's number one. It's gonna be all damaged. I mean, this is just amazing. Would you like to accept your appliance today? I, I cannot accept it like that. I mean, you not even if you put it inside, it has to go through a whole cycle yes, before I accept the appliance. But, um, we unbox it and make sure there's no damage. That to is it. not the point. I have to record because that is not yeah. the point.